and welcome back. It's great to see everybody. I have with me a very special guest. Peter Vogel is the CEO and co-founder of LeafWire based in Denver, Colorado. I had the opportunity to meet uh, uh, Peter for the first time last year. And uh, he is one of those folks that's hyper-connected in the industry, which is why I gravitated to it instantly. Well, it makes sense that he's uh, hyper-connected because that's the business he's in. Uh, so uh, it's, I'm thrilled to have Peter with us today to talk about lots of things in cannabis uh, 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 in terms of social media, changes, trends. Uh, but Peter, welcome uh, to our show and, and thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. And I know you're you're pretty modest, but I think you're also one of those hyper-connected people that kind of seems to know everyone who knows everyone. So I've always uh, been happy to kind of re-meet up with you and reconnect just to share information. So it's a pleasure, pleasure to be on with you. Well, that's what I love about this industry is, is people are, you know, because it is nascent and everybody is in essence, there are some people that are new, there are some people that are newer. And then there's a handful of people that are really, you know, war, you know been, been around. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's always nice to, to connect because people in cannabis truly are uh, interested in meeting and connecting and learning because we are an nascent industry. So tell us about LeafWire and the genesis of LeafWire and, and how it came to be uh, uh, the platform that you started. Sure. Uh, so it was actually uh, brought to me before I came into the cannabis industry. And this is back in 2017 at some point. Um, the CEO of a company called Simplifya. Uh, Mary Marathison, um, he and I had both been in the tech startup space for 10, 15 years together, and we both started our own separate companies. Uh, and he came to me and said he was now in cannabis. He was running Simplifya, which is a big compliance platform. And him and several investors had this idea for LeafWire and essentially talked me into quitting my job, jumping into the industry and uh, taking kind of a leap of faith. Wow. That's quite a leap of faith. And what year was it founded? What, when did you kick uh, it off? We went live, like th those discussions started in 2017. The, the company really kind of got, went live everything in 2018. So it's uh, about four and a half, four and a half years ago now, I guess, something like that. And in terms of social media, I mean, you, you're a very targeted social media platform for cannabis and it's obviously very targeted, but you know, social media has changed everything and cannabis in the last five years, social media has changed as well. You know, there's things you can do and say on social and you know, Facebook and Instagram that you couldn't say before, but, you know, are still prohibited. So give us a landscape of social media and cannabis, because I, you're, I would view you as the expert since you run. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. We're so we're very much one thing that's different about us. is We're very much focused on the business of cannabis. So we're very much a B2B platform. And almost everyone who's on the LeafWire platform, which is now about 50,000 members that have joined. Um, uh, are all either cannabis business owners, entrepreneurs, employees, or people who want to get into the industry. So it's very much focused around business. So to start off, that was a really big differentiator between, you know, Facebook and YouTube. A lot of those are really more B2C focused, right. where you have a lot of influencers who are, it's a lot about fashion and about strains of weed and about getting high and mm -hmm. about music and a very consumer oriented. And so we we kind of very intentionally only, only did marketing, only kind of promoted ourselves in very much business oriented places. So like with MJ Biz Daily, with Canvas Business Times, with you know Green Market Report, with Canvas Business Executive, Marijuana Moment. So these are all places that Canvas business people go to get news, right. share, share information, et cetera. So that was for us the biggest differentiation, biggest differentiation from the start. You know, and we looked at, we looked at LinkedIn and, and I, I'm a huge LinkedIn user. I have almost 30,000 followers wow. on LinkedIn. So I, uh, and people always ask us if they should use LeafWire LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And my first response is like, <laughs> it's never an A or B answer. Yeah. I mean, I, I have Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, <laughs> Disney Plus, Apple. I mean, I don't know how many other streaming services I have. So if you're enjoying content, and using something, you know, it, it's not an if this or that scenario. Um, but the challenge everyone faced in cannabis one is we all know that places like, you know, Facebook and YouTube and Google have long canceled people's accounts. They've completely shut people out of it, and even Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of get away with it for six months, a year, two years, and then you could, you know, get up to 100,000 followers and they shut your account down. Right. Or you could be on YouTube and have posted 
you know, hundred videos mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they shut your account down. Even if all you're doing is talking about politics, science, legislation for business, they will still shut your account down. So the only other thing there was, was LinkedIn, which ironically, the, the timing of your question is interesting because up until Q1 of this year, LinkedIn has been very friendly to cannabis and even allowed people to use to advertise ancillary services, not, right. not obviously selling product directly, right. but with LeafWire, for example, we used to do LinkedIn ads that said, Hey, come join the largest you know, business network in the world. Uh, and we did that for probably about a year or so. And all of a sudden in Q1, our ads got taken down from LinkedIn as did we had about five or six of the companies sells the same thing. Um, LinkedIn started to use some sort of bot that would go around and if you had the word cannabis or marijuana or anything they thought was drug related, they were not letting people pay for advertising anymore. So they started shutting down. You could still be on LinkedIn, but you couldn't cool. buy advertising from it. Um, and we don't know what that means for the rest of LinkedIn, right? but that, that just happened in Q1, which is, was an interesting development. And I don't know. Going backwards, what's going on? <laughs> we're supposed to, this is supposed to be getting better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it had to do with, I mean, obviously Microsoft bought them, but that was multiple years ago. Um, so I don't know what decision was made or, or how that started. But I mean, if anything, for us, it's kind of, it's kind of positive that now we're become more essential. Um, and and the, other, the other reason we wanted to build a platform like LeafWire is one, you know, one LinkedIn is huge. So there's 600 million people, right? That's twice the size of the United States. So it's, every person from every industry you could possibly imagine. So if you want to see mostly Canvas news and mostly Canvas events and mostly Canvas jobs, you're not going to because everyone's had other jobs. Everyone has connected to hundreds, if not thousands of other people. And you're going to see tons and tons of stuff from other industries that you may not care at all about. I mean, Canvas is a pretty specific industry. Uh, I mean, you go to very uh, kind of a set of events Mm -hmm. You know, you work with certain sets of partners. You can't just work with everyone. Um, so we also wanted to provide some things like, like we, we have an events tab on LeafWire, which has about a hundred events. Yeah. And they're, they're literally from like Germany to Colombia to. It's truly really amazing yeah. how they're coming out of the woodwork. I mean, Everywhere. Every, every state and every city is having one in the, in the United States. And, you know, from an international perspective, <laughs> right. uh, it really is an international business. Yeah, and that's actually one of the things we're most excited about uh, is we now, we, we're just doing some, uh, some press. We now have members from more than 100 countries, which is kind of crazy. Uh -huh. so, I mean, there's <laughs> only, I think there's something like only 160 countries out there and yeah, we, we now have members from more than 100. So it truly is an international business. And we, we see the, you know, the opportunity in Europe and South well, America. I love the idea to share, to share content and share ideas across borders changes the dialogue dramatically. Uh, because we here, especially in North America, are very, very blind to the way cannabis is viewed in other countries. Right. Um, you know, people are shocked when I say, you know, in many European countries, cannabis is reimbursed by insurance if you qualify. It's not you just you don't just get a card; it's actually paid for, like every other medication. It's like, well, right. we can learn a little bit from other countries. You think so we I, could... the idea of sharing is is very important? Yeah, uh, yeah, I I do too. And you 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 bring up a really good point that the how we think about things here in the u.s is so different even state by state that there still is most of us so i'm in denver and it's obviously it's been legal here for so long it's it's very common you see someone with a joint at a concert or you see someone with edibles at a party it's like it's not no one even thinks about it you know right. it's not even like a thing whereas it, you know we, we all forget cannabis is still recreationally illegal in more places than it's not mm -hmm. and we all still have ex-colleagues, family members, some maybe for religious reasons, some other that look still look down upon cannabis. So not everybody wants to go and literally write about cannabis and hemp all day long on a platform that is gonna be seen by everyone else that, that looks down upon them. Um, and, and you also- No, I call that the no judgment zone. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and another thing people kind of forget about is cannabis may not be the last industry you work in. Like, what if you want to go back to a Fortune 100 bank? Right. I mean, do you think they're going to look kindly upon, mm -hmm. you know, tons and tons of posts about cannabis? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, nowadays, a lot of these big employers, I mean, they comb through social media mm -hmm. to, to learn about you. So 
that's that's one of the things that I think is important that people forget is the stigma is really still real. And it's not going away anytime soon, because even just like alcohol, even when the government federally make, decriminalizes, it's still going to be up to states one at a time to have their, I mean, if you remember back the way they did it, some states you were, had to be 18, some 21, some you had states or stores run by the state, you know, like in Rhode Island, I think. There are, there are counties in South Georgia that were dry until very recently. Right. So. No, there's still, there's, there's tons <laughs> of places. Uh, uh, Salt Lake City does all sorts of weird thing with, with alcohol about going into restaurants and you have to join clubs and like, there's places where you couldn't buy alcohol on Sunday. There's so, I mean, and that's just how it's going to evolve. Like it's going to be state by state. So even with some magic wand, and, and here's the thing, none of us even know if this is going to happen, if the government decriminalizes in the next year or two, you're still going to have, you know, five to 10 years, if not longer, of states dealing with it. I mean, it, it takes, even when a state votes to do it, it takes them years to get going. Yeah. Yeah. So, it takes years. It takes years. And, that, and that's, you know, that, that when I look at the future of cannabis, it's, it, it, you know, you look at a 10 year window because, I mean, New York State legalized, uh, you know, just very recently, and it's going to not be to the end of the year if we're lucky that we actually see product being distributed legally uh, in, in New York. Um, and that's relatively fast. New Jersey, because that's such a robust uh, system to start with, you know, they're able to kick it off a little faster. But it's still before it hits critical mass, before you hit, you know, what you know, you know, what you have in Colorado takes years. Any industry takes years. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it'll happen fast because, you know, capital is coming into the market. Uh, because it's growing fast, uh, but you know, there are constraints, which was my next question in terms of, you know, what do you see? What are some of the trends you see in terms of the capital markets in cannabis uh, and challenges, opportunities in terms of where, you know, is it ancillary services? Is it touching the plant? Is it the Northeast corridor in terms of brands? You know, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, there's definitely a lot of people I talk to now are very amped up on New York, obviously, because it's just such a massive state. Yeah. Uh, I know lots of lawyers, lots of investors who are all, you know, uh, getting some licenses involved in groups that are kind of getting started. And that's, uh, there's a lot of excitement around that, you know, no, no, no question about that. And it's just such a massive state. Um, I mean, it's going to be, we'll, we'll see how it rivals California, but if they do well, it correctly. The whole Northeast corridor is <clears throat> bigger than, than California. To get. Uh, I, I think so too. And I mean, California has done such a, a bad job with, with regulations and taxation. They've, they've, they've hurt, you know, their potential for a legal market so badly that I think the, the Northeast has a chance to become potentially multiple times that big um, if they roll it out correctly. And, you know, there's a lot of states they can learn from. So, I mean, they have a lot of models to follow. The legislation keeps getting progressively better. Uh, incrementally, not, not necessarily big steps, but, you know, you look at the, uh, um, the New Jersey legislation, there was some great strides in terms of uh, uh, structure and opportunity for, for convicted uh, offenders, for, for minorities. So each one gets progressively better because the states seem to learn from each other. That's been one of the things that impresses me about the industry is when I go to these cannabis conferences, I meet a lot of legislators that are there to have these conferences, conversations, to figure out what's working, what's not. When in the industry, what are people complaining about? So, well, if they hadn't done this, if they'd only done it this way, that's right. a really important conversation for legislators to hear, because uh, they're crafting this as we speak. So, right. and uh, typically, they, they don't know much about the industry. No, they don't. And legislators, why would you expect them to? They're not supposed. Yeah. To, that's not their job. Their their right. job is to know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> right. Our job as an industry is to teach them, you know, the, the critical mass that helps our industry grow as a whole. So what are the challenges in the capital markets? Are you seeing, uh, are you seeing success? Are you seeing uh, moderate success? Are people able to raise capital? What, 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 are, your, what, are, your, what are your eyeballs telling you? Uh, I'd, I'd say it's kind of a mixture of both. I mean, I think the, the, the public markets are not doing great right now, you know, with, with inflation and with the war and with, you know, the pandemic still is ongoing. Uh, there are, there is some skittishness, I think. Um, you, we've still been seeing some over the last, you know, I'll, I'll give a window, 12 to 18 months, uh, a bunch of really big investments in, in tech plays in the cannabis space, like with people like Dutchie and Jane and, and a couple other ones, Wheat, Wheat Maps. Yeah. Uh, like a, a bunch of these guys have 
manage to raise large sums and still remain attractive. Um, and I think, you know, you know, a lot of people like the ancillary type services, the, the picks and shovels approach. Uh, the, historically, I think in, in a lot of markets, the, the challenges of running a dispensary or grow has kind of, some people have done great. Yeah. Some people are out of business. China, so, the China's off the penny. <laughs> yeah, so it's not quite run, as glamorous as it used to be. <laughs> it, it's just as hard to run that type of retail mm -hmm. or, you know, agricultural facility as it is in the in the real world, right? Mm -hmm. In every other industry. So, I think there is some allure to kind of like the picks and shovels where people feel like you're not as dependent on the price of flour. You're not as dependent on regulations changing. You're not as dependent on if a, a, a lot of these grows or retail facilities, if their plans to move into the next state or the next this or that get slowed down, mm -hmm. all of a sudden their funding dries up. Okay. And that that's hurt a lot of people, I think, uh, throughout the U.S. who expected some of these things to move a lot faster or, or a lot of states or even decriminalization or even banking to open up. I mean, I, I'm, I'm still kind of shocked to this day that the government, you think the one thing they want to control is money. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't they require people to be banked and taxed and, and monitor all of it and not let people drive around in vans, fill, armored vans filled with cash? You'd think that's like the last thing they want. So that, that to me has been the largest surprise, I think, in the lack of progress is the one thing that you think is in the government's complete interest they haven't done. Yeah, that was shocked. My, when I first got into the cannabis space, one of the first spots I stopped was a cash management company in Denver. I was just shocked. I mean, they, they counted a you know a billion dollars in cash a year for this company. Really? And it's like I said, when safe banking passes, you're out of business. And I said, probably, but in the meantime, we're that's just how we make a living. <laughs> um, you know, that's very short term business plan, but you know, it, it is you're absolutely right. It's it's shocking that certain things are, are tolerated that, that shouldn't be. Um, so what do you see for 2023 in Leafwire and, and the future of cannabis and Leafwire? To give us give us your crystal ball. Um, well, one, you know, I think as I mentioned earlier, the kind of international expansion is very exciting to us. And we, 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 we're, we're putting together some partnerships with companies like Pro Prohibition Partners, you know, that, that has a really big European yeah. influence. Uh, and we're starting to work with some people in South America. So we're trying to build some of these partnerships so that we can grow and be there. And, you know, we've been told that there's not really anything like a leaf wire over in Europe or really anywhere else. So it's still you know, wide open, you know, blue ocean. Uh, so one, I think that's really exciting for us. Uh, we're also launching, you know, I know you and I have talked about, we're, we're launching a mobile app coming out soon and everything we've done so far, you know, build the LeafWire brand, get to 50,000 people, uh, you know, get members from hundred countries. So far that's all been without a mobile app. So wow. I think once we, once we get that app out and we can reach all new demographics of people who just like to use apps more than, than desktop, Oh, and also just a level younger of generation than me, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like the bigger screen. <laughs> I like the bigger screen too. And, but you know, when you're on the road, the app is nice. Uh, so that's, that's really exciting for us to be able to tap into whole new audience demographics and also just engagement wise to provide ways that people can interact when they're sitting in the doctor's office or sitting in their car uh, or just you, you wake up in bed. The first thing most people do is reach for their phone. You know, mm -hmm. look, look at a couple apps, look at some news. So we, we want to be part of that daily ritual. Uh -huh. um, and then the other kind of aspect to this that, you know, you, you and I just, just talked about recently was our focus on conferences. So conferences are huge in cannabis and they're coming back now. You know, everyone's going to these, people are excited about them. And one of the very common pain points people have is the mobile apps most of these events use are kind of annoying to use. Typically, the way the experience works, and we, we talk to a bunch of people who go to events, uh, and they almost all reported the same thing. You go to an event, you have to download an app you, you haven't heard of, or you've only used like once before. You don't really know how to use it. You have to put in some information. You don't really check it throughout the event. And then you go home, and you realize maybe you got a message from someone that wanted to meet, but you didn't even see it. And then you get home, and you delete the app, and you never look at it again. Mm -hmm. So it's hey. kind of a wasted experience <laughs> from start to finish. And a lot of these events, they're paying, you know, three, four, five, ten thousand dollars to a third party to use to use their mobile app. So we figured if we're already the largest business network in cannabis, why not enable it so 
we can work with conference organizers and let them essentially upload some of their information into the LeafWire app. Like they can upload their agenda for the event, a map of the conference, the list of sponsors, the list of parties, et cetera. And then every time you connect with someone on LeafWire, they're there and you, the next event you go to, you're still connected to them and everyone next you, you connect with is there. So to provide like a, a continuity. Or the cumulative, the cumulative effect is really meaningful. A hundred percent. And and there are, if you think about how many events there are, you know, we were, we were talking about this right before we started, yeah. how many events there are that are 50 people or a hundred people or none of those events can afford a mobile app. Right. So our goal is really to go out to almost any event there is, offer them to use our mobile app for free. They can upload information. We make it convenient for the organizer and the attendee. They no longer have to download a new app every time. And if you already have the LeafWire app, then it's convenient to just look and see, oh, what time does that speaker start? It's yep. right there. Okay. Um, and we also want to make it so people can find each other. So we kind of have a find someone near me feature. So you can click a button and see everyone within two miles of you. Mm -hmm. So if you're at an event, you can discover that, oh, I didn't know uh, Sarah or so-and-so was here. I, I should ask her to meet up. And then through the LeafWire app, you can also schedule a meeting with them. It will sync to your phone. Um, we also enabled, because, because of the pandemic, uh, uh, QR codes. So we're going to have a QR code next to everyone's picture. So that you can basically, if you just snap a picture of their QR code, you don't have to give business cards back and forth, right? So another thing people don't necessarily like to do and have to be able to forget their cards anyway. So the, the whole idea is just to try to look at the pain points of a lot of these conferences and just make it easier for people to network and find each other and then, uh, and then reconnect afterwards. Because then you go home and everyone you met is in one place. Yeah. So that's... That's what we're excited about. And That's why you're the most hyper-connected man in cannabis. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we are to be a little self-serving pitch. We, you also asked about uh, fundraising and capital. We are starting our, our Series A, essentially this week. So we're, we're going to be raising a Series A. And right. part of the strategy in the growth is all based around the mobile app and that uh, conference strategy. So I'm literally just this week starting to send out our deck to people. Wow, perfect uh, timing. That's great. Yeah. Very exciting. When you mapped out the vision to me uh, you know, several months ago, it's, it, it makes a lot of sense. The industry desperately needs it because I have personally gone through exactly what you're describing. I literally have dozens of abandoned apps, I call them, from conferences and conference companies that don't exist anymore. Right. Um, and it's like, it's like and all those contacts are dead. All the, they're, they're all dead ends. Right. It is very frustrating and not necessary. So I, I applaud your efforts and I, I wish you success. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. It's, it's always a pleasure to spend time with you. Um, and, you know, in, in a burgeoning business, it's always important to meet new people constantly and stay connected and look for new content. And LeafWire is just a, a fabulous resource for the industry. Thank you so much from, from all of us for what you provide. And, and I wish you guys a continued growth and success. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, very kind words of you. And, and well, anyone who does want to come join us, we're just leafwire.com. Uh, I am peter at leafwire.com. So I'm also easy to find either via email or just come on to LeafWire and uh, you can find me on there. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you.